Hi, I'm Dr. Emily Littlejohn of the Cleveland Clinic, director of the Lupus Clinic, and I'm here with you today to share some interesting cases. This case is a 21-year-old with systemic lupus diagnosed in late 2021. Her initial symptoms were mucocutaneous ulcers, arthritis, and lymphadenopathy. Serologies were notable for a positive ANA, positive double-stranded DNA antibodies, positive anti-Smith, and low complements. She was placed on hydroxychloroquine at this time. She subsequently developed proteinuria and underwent a renal biopsy where she was diagnosed with lupus nephritis class 3 and class 5. At that time, she was placed on mycophenolate mofetil in addition to plaquenil and 60 milligrams of prednisone with a slow planned taper. She then developed left wrist pain and swelling and worsening oral ulcers and began self-regulating her prednisone doses to control the wrist pain, taking as much as 60 milligrams daily until her pain was so severe that she presented to our emergency department. Here you can see her initial presenting symptoms. On the left is a picture of her oral ulcerations extending onto her lip. And on the right, you see her left swollen wrist with an overlying rash. MR imaging was concerning for abscess versus osteomyelitis. She underwent incision and drainage of the left wrist, which showed purulence, consistent with a septic joint. She was placed on broad spectrum antibiotics at this time. She also underwent an extensive infectious disease workup, at which time she admitted to having unprotected sex. The ID workup was broadened and blood cultures returned positive for Neisseria gonorrhea. She was diagnosed with disseminated gonococcal infection complicated by septic arthritis and her antibiotics narrowed down to IV ceftriaxone. Her hospital course was complex with many organs involved. She developed shortness of breath with a hemoglobin drop and chest imaging showed ground glass opacities. A bronchoscopy with BAL was consistent with diffuse alveolar hemorrhage. The infectious workup on the BAL was negative. She underwent an echocardiogram, which showed a pericardial effusion without tamponade physiology. Due to these manifestations, she was pulsed with IV methylprednisolone, 250 milligrams daily for five days, and then transitioned to PO prednisone, 60 milligrams daily. Mycophenolate mofetil was held at this time, given active infection. Her creatinine remained normal, and her urine protein to creatinine ratio during this time also remained stable. Other than transient leukopenia, her blood count stabilized. The takeaways here, we know immunosuppressive medications put our patients at risk for infections and history taking is imperative in elucidating a lupus flare versus an infection. We know a lupus flare can cause an infection. We also know infections put people at risk for lupus flares.